These guys got me with their sign. So I can't go in there. So somebody challenged me a few weeks ago. They said that Borellis Coffee House actually has the best huevos rancheros in Albuquerque. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I've never been here before, but first thing I can tell you, one, is it's packed. Like the parking lot is already packed. And um, number two, it has like one and a half thousand reviews on Google and there it's like a 4.3 star average rating. So I'm excited to check it out. Of course, I'm gonna go with the deluxe, but that is actually a very good price. That was the best challenge to uh, Vix Vittles Loaded Huevos Rancheros that I think there is. I think that I need to separate them in categories because I like Vix Vittles for a different reason. The Loaded comes with uh, bacon, sausage, and uh, ham in it. And it's really, really good. And garnish. This didn't have garnish. Um, but this is going to have to be the best standard Huevos Rancheros I think that I've had. And I've eaten all over the state probably at least 50 different restaurants where I've had Huevos Rancheros. And this was a very good challenge. Very, very good challenge. So today I'm stopping at Smoky Bear Historical Park. This is like the, uh, the most adorable like little museum I've ever been in. So they have like a 10 minute video and a little thing for you to walk around and then like an outdoor spot where Smokey the Bear is actually buried. Smoky. This place is super cool. So I was just in the exhibits and the theater and everything. Um, you can check all that out. And then you come out and there's a walking trail. There's a fallen firefighters memorial and then Smokey's grave where the bear is actually buried. I didn't even know that Smokey was a real bear until like last year. And then I found out that he actually came from New Mexico, which is even cooler. Um, and then he's buried here. So this has been on my list since last year. Um, it's really cute. It's not very big, but it's only $2 to come in and check it out. So um, if you're ever passing through and you want to stop and check it out, I definitely recommend it. It's pretty cool. The trail outside, of course, teaches you about all the different kinds of forest zones and then they have different trees planted as you walk around. A little pond habitat. Frozen right now though. They dedicated this wildland fallen firefighter memorial on Smoky Bear Day. 
It says Smokey retired from the Forest Service on May 2nd, 1975. He was 25 years old. That's 70 years old in human years, which in those days was the mandatory retirement age for all federal employees. <laughs> Smokey was honored as the first bear to become a full-fledged member of the National Association of Retired Federal Employees. This is the resting place of the first living Smokey Bear. In 1950, when Smokey was a tiny cub, wildfire burned his forest home in the nearby Capitan Mountains of the Lincoln National Forest. Firefighters found the badly burned cub clinging to a blackened tree and saved his life. In June 1950, the cub was flown to our nation's capital to become the living symbol of wildfire prevention and wildlife conservation. After 25 years, he was replaced by another orphan black bear from the Lincoln National Forest. And I learned last week, too, it's not Smokey the Bear. It's just Smokey Bear. It's like a Mandela effect thing. I always thought it was Smokey the Bear. Smokey the Bear. But it's just Smokey Bear. So this is like the Smokey Bear mountain viewpoint. And Smokey was found in the gap. As a burned little cub, poor little guy. So I got out here too late to do it today, but I'm going to be heading to Fort Stanton, which is really close to the Smokey the Bear uh, historical park. But along the way, they have this, it's a, it's a conservation area, and it has this dirt trail that kind of goes all the way through it. Technically, you are allowed to camp here, though. Um, you can't really have fires and things like that, but you are allowed to camp here. Um, and there's a lot of, you'll see these trail markers. So there's actually a lot of hiking trails. Um, and I'm going to choose one and kind of just go on a little bit of a hike while I have some daylight. So I'm going to choose this Pershing trail. There's like a, this one is called Kit Carson loop trail. And there's one across the way there, but this one looks like it has the best trees. So I'm going to head out this way for a little bit of a hike. And I'm actually just going to sleep there. I'm the only person out here that I've seen, so I'm just going to sleep right there tonight. Hanging out up here has inspired me to get my backpacking setup going. So if you guys have any recommendations for uh, backpacking gear, leave it in the comments below. And I will be uh, working on getting that stuff over in probably the next week or so. Because um, I'd set up right here if I could. Let's go with, uh, this has recently started happening. These shocks are going out. Um, going to roll with beef patty, jalapeno pepper jack today. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, hopefully this is better than the chicken one that I had the other day. Today would have been a decent day to cook. Um, I haven't been bringing food to cook because I don't want to set up in cold, windy and everything like that. But, uh, Reese's Pieces greeted me as soon as I opened the bag. Let's go. All right. That's a good dessert. That's a good dessert. Um, but yeah, I haven't been cooking just because like I haven't wanted to set up in the cold, man. It's, it's tough to, to get all that going, but, um, it's actually pretty warm today. Today would have been a good day to cook. So here's the patty it, in the MRE pack. And you can see like the outline of it. It's like actually a rectangle patty. Pretty interesting. Chocolate chip cookie or an oatmeal chunk cookie as well. It's got Reese's Pieces and a cookie. Plain tortillas. Cherry cobbler. A lot of dessert in this one. So I'm going to get this fired up though. I'm just going to eat this. I won't. <laughs> I won't go through it too much. I'll show you guys the patty. Other than that, I'm not. You guys have seen enough MREs by now, probably, over the last few weeks. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to have to replace those. That's just getting embarrassing there. I'm going to have to replace those. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this beef patty is, and then we'll see what the next couple of weeks have if I'm going to end up uh, starting to cook again. You guys have anything you want me to try to cook out here let me know i've done some interesting stuff out here i've done some easy camping stuff um i like to cook i'm not the best at it but you guys have see something and you're like i want you to try this specific recipe and just like watch me struggle with it while trying to cook out here let me know i'll make that happen for you guys i'm actually just gonna like full send on this uh 
burger. So I got the tortillas. And then they gave me, and this one I will eat the, it's a cheese spread with bacon. I'm going to put that down and then um, eat the patty with that. See, this makes sense to send this cheese spread with bacon. It seems like it might be too much. The tortillas that come in these are always like super brittle. I'm assuming that's just an age, age situation there. And then they sent a ketchup packet. Throw it down on some really watery ketchup there. Let's see, here's the MRE itself. Get a look at this beef patty in here. Let's go. Oh yeah. The way I figure it is kind of at the end of the day, it can't be worse than that chicken thing I had the other day. This is not bad. <laughs> this one is actually, even with all that weird stuff on it, I'll actually be able to eat this one. So that's good. I mean, it doesn't look the most appetizing. <clears throat> but it's a rare... Rare thing where it tastes better than it looks. The only thing that's actually dated in this MRE Best Buy, uh, what is that, May 2018? The thing about candy is it's just one giant preservative. So technically, I don't think it, candy can ever really go bad. That's why you shouldn't eat that much of it, though. But still low-key happy about these. So the fort itself doesn't open until 10 o'clock, but I am going to um, head over and I think I can probably get into the cemetery right away. So I'm going to head to the cemetery first. Ah! So it says that Fort Stanton is actually one of the most intact 19th century forts in the country. So it was built in 1855 and coming out here, I was assuming i guess since it is so old that the cemetery would be um like some of the older cemeteries that i've seen where it's it's a little bit more beat up and um everything is a little bit older all of this is kind of but it's actually a very well preserved and people are still buried here it's a veteran cemetery so um it's really cool these are all Actually, white crosses all the way up and all the way that way. There are some some headstones, but most of them are white crosses. And um, yeah, I don't know. I was expecting something a little bit different. I didn't realize that it was going to be a veteran cemetery like this, but still very, very cool. Seeing some, most of these don't look like they have any dates on them, but this one was 1877 to 1934. So definitely definitely older but these ones don't have i don't know what 738 means on the bricks i guess just numbers i'm not sure dime on that one most of the ones that i can find so far with the dates are early 1900s death dates anyway so this sign actually says they're open at 8, which is good. So online it says 10, but it must mean the actual museum. But here are the stables. 
at Fort Stanton. Corrals have stood on this site since 1855. The current ones were built in 1877 to replace the other ones that burned. Very cool. So these ones, these stone ones have been up since 1877. That's crazy. Check out this power box. Sheesh, buddy. So keeping this door locked, but it seems like there's a little like display classroom thing in there. So named for Captain Henry Stanton, Fort Stanton was established May 4th, 1855 as a military fort to protect settlers from Apache attacks. Operated as a military fort until 1896. It played a part in the Civil War, was the first tuberculosis hospital in New Mexico, was an internment camp for German seamen during World War II, and is known for heroes such as Kit Carson, Black Jack Pershing, Buffalo Soldiers of the 8th and 9th Cavalry, and the notorious Billy the Kid. Check out the old, old post office. Wonder if it's still operational. But I have all of this to check out. And then the museum, I think, is that building or somewhere over there. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to drive around and check all this out. I'm gonna guess that this is like where they had the tuberculosis hospital. I don't know what made me think that they would have some of these buildings open and available to walk into, but so far it seems like that's a big, big no for walking into some of these. So there's a lot to explore though. This place is actually freaking huge. <clears throat> this building would be so fun to ghost hunt, though. I wonder if there's, like, a way. If there's somebody I can contact. And just be like, hey. Let me spend the night in the old TB hospital. And ghost hunt it. Oh, it's super dark in there. Of course, locked. Somebody set off an alarm over there somewhere. Probably somebody else trying to do the same thing as me. Pulling on door handles that they shouldn't be pulling on. So they have this trail and like the sketchiest plywood and pallet bridge to walk over the river. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, wow. So this is Japanese segregation camp number one. During 1945, 17 men of Japanese ancestry were imprisoned here in what was officially known as Japanese segregation camp number one. The site was heavily guarded and surrounded by a 10-foot-tall barbed wire fence. Prisoners' quarters consisted of two men, wooden victory huts. The men shared basic facilities with German segregants housed next door. That is crazy. This side I can actually go in, too. This side is very, very much more beat up than the other side. Adobe. This part to me looks awfully a lot like a, a CCC building. 1944, this one. Wow. There's nothing left.
And I definitely can't. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to walk on that? There's no way. Wow. Oh, wow. There's actually a, uh, like a basement area to this building. Where the furnace was, it looks like. I'm not gonna, not gonna find my way down there, but that's pretty cool. There's like this other building up here that's pretty much just done, but I'm gonna walk up to it and check it out anyway. I legitimately did not know that internment camps existed in New Mexico. Learning stuff out here. Every time I come out to a place like this, I learn something new. Um, I don't know why I never associate that stuff with New Mexico. I don't know. Let's see, there's some stairs here. Whoa. What the heck? I wonder what this would have been. There's no sign for this particular building right here. We have these little things coming up out of the ground and then there's this thing that at some point is this power. And then another bench there. Some small little like storage room here. I wonder what the heck this was. Keep in mind too, that's like the internment camp area. Let's see if there's anything left behind in this building. Super scour. So this would have been like the kitchen slash dining area. This is the final building on this side. This side, everything's been open. I don't. I don't think that they uh, care as much about this side. Obviously, if they're letting it crumble like this you got to kind of hike over here and cross the river and everything to get to it i think that's why Probably a good thing there's no power. So the museum opened up. All the highlighted buildings are buildings that I can actually go into now that everything is open. I got me a little map. So I'm just kind of walking around. They repurposed this old building. It's a really cool fireplace. But they repurposed this old building as the museum. And they have a bunch of stuff around, like little bugles and whatnot, artifacts that are found on the property. What a saddle, huh? You're a bad boy if you had that. They found this rock underneath the porch of this building when it was being refurbished. They have a bunch of photographs from the late 1800s. Fort Stanton Social Club, Order of Dancing. 
this is this long list of rules is for the patients. Patients, the patient showing evidence of intoxication any time will be disciplined. The patients who have a fever are not allowed to play card games. This is a picture from inside that building that I was just in across the way. Had the dishwasher in it. That's crazy. So I was standing right where these dudes were. They represent migrations made between mountain and prairie. Migrations of necessity. So I learned a couple of cool things while I was watching the video. Um, that building that I was just at, that it was like the giant hole in the ground. I was like, what is this? Um, it was a swimming pool built by the prisoners and they held diving competitions there. Go figure. Um, I also learned that there's a cave system around here, but they have it closed. So they, they have the uh, cave system actually closed. It's a 30 mile long cave system, but it's closed because of white noise syndrome. Um, I guess that the bats have, so they're protecting the bats right now. You can't actually go into the caves, unfortunately, but right now I'm in the barracks dining hall. So there's five buildings I actually get to explore and I'm really excited about it. I should have brought my ghost hunting equipment though, because I'm the only person in here and I bet you I could have found something. I bet you something could happen. Check this out though. So this was the original barracks. Kind of shows what their belongings would have been. It says that soldiers had little in the way of personal belongings and the army did not provide storage for anything other than standard uniforms. Two soldiers slept in each bed head to toe and back to back. 80 men could be housed in these barracks. So <laughs> two men were sharing these beds in here, each one. That is crazy. I'll tell you the other thing too is it is freezing in here. It's cold outside. It is cold in here. This says in most barrack buildings, a small room was set aside for the first and second sergeants of the company. So these guys got their own bed and room. You got a sword on this side. And then... I'm guessing the, these are electric, but I'm guessing that uh, that's simulating back in the late 1800s. They actually would have had candles in those and literally hanging from the walls there. So you got candles, tin cups. This is also the, I think I had said dining hall, right? Barracks slash dining hall. Yeah, that's what this is right here. So I guess they could have come to get provisions right here, whatever they needed. And it's really just stone walls. No insulation in the ceiling. This is pretty cool. They have like an old uniform laid out. Warm socks, at least. Wool, I'm guessing. I just saw this. I missed it on the first walkthrough. But at least they would have had a wood-burning stove in here to heat the place up. Because <laughs> it's so cold. So this is the building that I'm most excited to go into. I was trying to go in from the other side earlier. This is the hospital. Fort Bayard, I know I'm going to go there at some point, but I did not know that they had a sanatorium in Watrous. I go to that coffee shop when I'm up in that area, and I didn't know that St. Vincent's was a sanatorium in Santa Fe. And like a little look into the... Uh, Everyday life here, occupational therapy. Look at that projector. That's pretty cool. So they would have had, I'm guessing this is showing that they had like a movie theater. I gotta stop and read some of this stuff, but it takes me too long to do that on camera. And I actually drove by the baseball field. It's pretty much done. Um, it's pretty beat up, but I hope that they restore it one day because that's pretty cool. 
you know, in the early 1900s, I mean, baseball was just huge. Look at these guys. Look at how many fish they caught. By the 1920s, a full dental laboratory and clinic was in operation. So they even had dentistry. I'm not a fan of the dentist. It's my... It's like the one thing I won't sit for. I'll sit for a bunch of... Uh, a bunch of other medical stuff. I can sit through it all, but I'm squirmy when I'm in the dentist chair. Radiology? For some reason, I didn't realize that the x-ray was discovered in 1895. Look at this blood bank. What? Can I open this? What? One's a blood bank. That is crazy. Just the pharmacy. So you just had pharmacists like smashing medicines together in a bowl back in the day. It's a picture from the pharmacy actually, fully stocked. So this is the the TB cabins. I'll show you where they had those. Um, none of these are there anymore. They're all, all torn down, but I'll show you where they had them. They believed that open air was one of the cures. So, I mean, you had just people sleeping outside, uh, to get as much air as possible to help cure TB. Tuberculosis. This is tent house furniture. What they had outside over there. Of course, the coolest... Like most haunted looking side, they don't let you go into. That's the side I wanna go to though. This hospital, it says, actually had the first elevator in the state of New Mexico. Food was a major component of Fort Stanton's treatment regimen. Healthy weight gain was considered an indicator that a patient's prognosis was improving, so they were required to eat as much as they could, as often as they could, if possible. Patients were expected to eat around 4,000 calories per day. So this is the Catholic chapel. It's a stone building. Very dark in here, but uh, one of the buildings that you can see. Check out what they got going on in here. It's for the, uh, where the priest lived, I'm guessing. Are popping and scared me. So this is the uh, commanding officer's quarters. Let's see, it says a few people who lived within these walls. So the commanding officer and his family were allowed to live here in this house. And uh, you can see this is a lot bigger <laughs> than sharing a double bed with somebody like the other soldiers had to do. Got a nice little fireplace there. Let's see. Joining rooms? Shoot, I'd live here now. Got back-to-back -back fireplaces like that. That's pretty cool. Dining room here. Well, this place goes way back. Way back, whoa. The cowards never start and the weak die along the way. All right, man. 
We got the kids' rooms back there. What do you guys think this is? What is that? Like four fireplaces in this house. So we've been making the loop. We started there and have come all the way through to here. I think there's one more building that they let us go into. It's either that one or that one. So this is the officer's quarters, not the commanding officer's quarters. Got a nice little window here. Obviously they're still working on this building, refurbishing it. And they don't let you go and see the other, the other sides of it. So that's unfortunate. Nice little houses though, would have been. Nice place to stay for sure. So this is the last building that they let us tour. I'm gonna to take you guys to the TB tents on the hill and show you guys where that's at. And uh, that's the tour for now. Obviously it seems like this place is a work in progress. Um, it became a state monument in 2007 and uh, I'm assuming they just need the funding to get it to where it needs to be. They're trying. So right up here is where they would have had those uh, open air tents and people with tuberculosis just living in basically a, a little tent city, if you will, right up here. Of course, I have to come see the trucks. They want you to stay behind the chain, but it actually looks like they have an exhibit in there. They got somebody laying on the bed, a little helmet, but I guess this exhibit's not ready. It says that they're selling pins uh, in order to get this exhibit up and running. So on my last little abandoned stop here, I saw all these cars kind of like tucked away in this field. And then there's like a little abandoned adobe that I wanted to check out. I mean, aside from the cars, there's really not much left here. Um, these old adobe walls are pretty cool. I'm going to use this to kind of hide from the wind and uh, officially sign off. So uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, Smoky Bear National Park and uh, Fort Stanton. Found some pretty cool things, saw some pretty cool things this week, and I uh, hope to see you guys next week. Peace, everybody.